For Imperial Beach resident Jessica Vonderstad, the beach has special meaning. When she was a little girl, her father brought her to the sand every weekend. Some of her fondest childhood memories took place on a beach. So it's ironic that Vonderstad was on a beach in 2008 when she got a call from her aunt. She said, you know, your dad was found in the backyard of his home with a self-inflicted gunshot wound to the head. And I guess the words gunshot and wounds didn't register because I remember asking her, is he okay? And there was just this long pause and then she said, no, your, your dad is dead. It was only after he killed himself that Vonderstad found out her father had suffered from depression for decades. A year before his suicide in 2007, right at the beginning of the recession, Nick Vonderstad lost his job and his health insurance. So I think that hit him quite hard more than anything, and definitely with the combination of struggling with mental illness already, in particular depression, that impact made the depression worse, and it put him in a position that you know, I've had it explained to me, it's like a black cloud, and that black cloud gets bigger and bigger and bigger, and it gets so big and so dark that you can't see outside of it, and that, that's unfortunately what happened to my dad. Traditionally, suicide rates rise during economic crises. In fact, suicide rates peaked in the United States during the Great Depression of the 1930s. It turns out job losses are another risk factor for suicide. A job loss uh, can be an enormous uh, stressor uh, and maybe one of those events that, that may uh, you know, tip the balance in, in somebody who otherwise has other suicide risk factors. UC San Diego psychiatrist Sidney Zizek says suicide is a growing problem among middle-aged people. We're, we're seeing the rates of suicide going up in, uh, in midlife, a time when people not only are losing jobs, but also really beginning to have concerns about retirement, retirement benefits, and their ability to maintain themselves at a time when their health may be failing, et cetera. The recession has left millions of people unemployed and poor. In fact, the Census Bureau says nearly three out of five Americans living in poverty are of working age. So what can people do to prevent someone from going off the edge? Mental health professionals say family members can play a key role in helping to prevent suicides. They can look for some of the warning signs, like a sense of hopelessness, increased substance abuse, and veiled threats. Family therapist David Peters says people need to speak up if they're concerned. And it's okay to ask your loved one, hey, are you okay? What's going on in your mind? Are you thinking of hurting yourself? Do I have to worry about you committing suicide? Those questions we don't ask one another. They're taboo. But if you don't ask, you don't know. Jessica Vonderstad says her dad became very withdrawn and closed off before he killed himself three years ago. Looking back, she wishes she had known those were red flags. When you, when you don't have that education, when you don't know those signs, in the moment you, you don't realize that is a cry for help.